Welcome back. And we turn now to an environmental issue. The Carteret Islands are about as near to paradise in the South Pacific as you could ever imagine. But there is trouble in paradise. Warming temperatures and rising waters are forcing islanders to break with centuries of tradition and leave their homes behind. Martin Geisler reports. Set far out in the South Pacific, the Carteret Islands are the very definition of isolation. It took us three days of solid traveling just to get here. What we found was a people and a place virtually untouched by the outside world until now. This is a place where customs have been handed down through the generations and life is as simple as it was centuries ago. But it's all about to end as these people become the world's first climate change refugees. The sea, which has sustained them down the centuries, is about to bring their idyllic way of life to an end. It's rising because of industries they've never known and gases they've never heard of. Now they're fishing where their homes once stood. They've tried to erect defences, but piles of giant clamshells are no match for an ocean that's rising relentlessly. But they, uh, they have been, uh, uh, you know, continued battered by... Uh, ocean power yeah. that uh, also in, time, in times of uh, floods it was carried away from this, uh, its original places and uh, uh, destroyed and uh, that almost all of it is gone. Soon the water will have swallowed these islands completely. Just a short while ago this was the main path across the island of Huene but just look at it now the water rose and cut this place in half and it's still rising. That is the level of the crisis the people here face. They're forced to survive on coconut milk and the fish they can catch, but they're happy. Now, though, they face a life of handouts in a refugee camp 100 miles across the sea. Selina Natoy says she and her fellow islanders will be stripped of their heritage and their dignity. It threatens me, but, you know, it, 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 we are helpless. On this island. We, we don't know where to go. This is where the islanders used to grow their crops. Now it's a swamp. At high tide, it's deep underwater. Sharks and stingrays swim between these trees. At low tide, mosquitoes breed here, and they have brought disease. At the island's hospital, children lie on the sand floor. Five or six arrive each day, all suffering from malaria. Delpin is just two months old. She has a fever. Her mother is worried. Everyone here remembers how one child suffered less than a year ago. Last day we had one child coming in, fitting and unconscious until he died. These are religious people. Every Sunday they gather for mass but no amount of praying can turn back the sea. The island's priest is preparing his congregation for an exodus. It's a prospect that breaks their hearts. Uh, I think I really miss the place, everything. I, I will miss the homes and the place, the sea and everything. So it's going to be really sad for us. I mean, for me, especially because I love the place. I don't want to leave it, but because of the problem, I think I have to leave. I'm sailing away with tears in my eyes, these women sing. The song has been passed down the generations, but never have the lyrics rung so true. Martin Geisler, ITV News, on the Carteret Islands in the South Pacific. Wow, beautiful picture, pictures there. Let's get you a weather update. Fritz DeVos is right here at the Weather Center. What's going on, Fritz? Well, Colleen, we've seen some very cold air uh, pushing south or across uh, North America uh, behind that uh, very strong frontal system that we've been watching. And the cold air invading also parts of Southern California. Take a look at uh, what uh, things look like in uh, around uh, Sacramento. The uh, citrus industry is really suffering. You can see uh, orange uh, frozen, and uh, we're going to continue to see uh, some very, very cold weather across uh, these areas. And uh, this is not typical for this time of year, of course. It doesn't get that cold, but that cold air mass is going to be there for a while and uh, it has also affected the parts of
of uh, Texas. If I can show you our radar, we're still looking at uh, some uh, mix of precipitation, ice, snow, freezing rain, and even rain you can see associated with that over the next 24 hours. So very difficult traveling conditions. Schools are closed in the parts of Texas, and also uh, we're going to continue to see the cold air invading most of the southeastern part of the states for the next uh, 24 hours. We're going to be traveling there. You can see the forecast for Thursday. Where we are still looking at uh, the effect of uh, that uh, uh, frontal system into the southeastern part with uh, some mixed uh, precipitation in to Friday as well. In Australia, well, we are looking at a different uh, uh, type of uh, weather. We are looking at summertime, and uh, bushfires are a typical feature from uh, Australian summer, but they came with a vengeance this year because of uh, the v severe drought conditions that they're suffering, and we are going to still be watching those very hot temperatures and winds fueling those fires. We'll take a look at more city forecasts now around the world.